Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Cohen from the Keck USC School of Medicine in Los Angeles. I'm also the chair of the Workforce for Media Relations and Communications for the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. This is a recorded press briefing from research presented at the 57th annual meeting of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. The first presentation is entitled Sex Disparities in Coronary Artery Bypass Grafting Techniques, a Society of Thoracic Surgeons Database Analysis. It will be presented by Oliver Jawitz from Duke University in North Carolina. I will then discuss the paper. Hello, my name is Oliver Jawitz and I'm a resident physician in the Duke University Department of Surgery. I would like to sincerely thank the Society of Thoracic Surgeons for highlighting our work. As a little bit of background, most people think of coronary artery disease as a male only disease. However, that is very far from the truth. Complications of coronary disease are actually the most common cause of death among women in, in the US. Furthermore, a greater proportion of women are dying from sudden cardiac death when compared to men. And while as a healthcare community, we seem to be making progress with decreasing the incidence of heart attacks among men, the incidence among females is actually rising. That naturally leads us to the question, why has there been a clear and persistent disparity in outcomes between male and female patients with coronary artery disease? Female patients appear to present with symptoms of coronary disease on average 10 years later than men, and these symptoms are more likely to be atypical. Because of these unusual symptoms, females with cardiovascular disease tend to have a longer time from symptom onset until diagnosis. They are also less likely to receive guideline concordant medical treatment female patients are significantly less likely to be referred for invasive testing and treatment. Lastly, female patients are more likely to die after experiencing a heart attack or undergoing coronary artery bypass grafting or cabbage surgery compared with male patients. Several large retrospective studies have demonstrated operative mortality rates following isolated coronary artery bypass grafting among female patients to be approximately double that of males. While it is clear that female patients have inferior post-operative outcomes compared with their male counterparts, many of these studies have significant limitations, which seriously impacts their interpretability. Regardless, it is clear that females don't do as well as males after undergoing cabbage. But why is that? As already discussed, female patients undergoing cabbage tend to have a greater number of comorbidities and more severe coronary artery disease than males. In addition, there is ample evidence that females experience a greater number of post-operative complications. In addition to these factors, we hypothesize that there exists differences in guideline concordant surgical approaches between male and female patients undergoing cabbage, which may contribute to the persistent disparities in outcomes observed. As such, we aim to determine if there are differences by sex in guideline concordant surgical practices among patients undergoing first time isolated cabbage in the United States. For the purpose of this project, we focused on three important surgical practices that are supported by US and European guidelines. The first is the use of the left internal mammary artery or LEMA for bypassing blockages in the left anterior descending or LAD artery. The second guideline is bypassing all areas in need of improved blood flow in the heart commonly referred to as complete revascularization. And finally, their third guideline we examined is the use of more than one artery, also known as multi-arterial grafting. We queried the STS Adult Cardiac Surgery Database for all first-time isolated cabbage patients from January 1, 2011 to June 30, 2019. We stratified patients primarily by sex, and our primary endpoints of interest were the three cabbage guidelines already discussed. In this analysis, we captured just over 1.2 million patients undergoing isolated cabbage during the study period. Approximately 75% of these patients were male and 25% female. Here are some key demographic characteristics of the study cohort stratified by sex. All of these factors were statistically different between the sexes. Female patients were older, had a smaller body surface area, were less likely Caucasian and more likely Black, were significantly more likely to have a history of diabetes, 
and a history of congestive heart failure. As I briefly alluded to at the beginning of my talk, many of the prior analyses examining sex disparities in cabbage have been rightfully criticized for failing to account for significant differences in key characteristics, including body size, between female and male patients. To address this, we performed multivariable regression analyses for our three endpoints of interest, controlling for factors from the STS 2018 isolated cabbage model. In our first model, we sought to determine the odds of a female patient undergoing LAD revascularization with a lemograph. After adjustment, females had a 21% lower odds of undergoing lemografting to their LAD compared with male patients. We then sought to determine the association between sex and the odds of undergoing complete revascularization. We found that females had a 14% lower odds of undergoing complete revascularization compared with males. Lastly, we examined the association between sex and multi-arterial grafting. We found that female patients had a 22% lower odds of undergoing multi-arterial grafting compared to male patients. So in conclusion, female patients undergoing isolated cabbage in the US between 2011 and 2019 had a 14 to 22% lower odds of undergoing guideline concordant revascularization. Further, while I didn't show these data here, we found that certain subgroups of female patients were particularly disadvantaged, including those of Asian and Hispanic backgrounds. In the context of the published literature, it is clear that sex disparities exist in all aspects of care for patients with CAD, including diagnosis, referral for treatment, and now in approaches to cabbage. Standardizing surgical revascularization techniques across sexes must be a priority to improve the clear and persistent disparity in CAD outcomes between males and females. Thank you. Dr. Jowitz and associates from Duke are to be congratulated for their study, which documents the disparity in surgical strategies between men and women who undergo coronary artery bypass grafting. The authors importantly point out that though coronary artery disease has traditionally been considered a predominantly male disorder, that it's not only common, but even deadlier in women. Some of this can be attributed to the fact that coronary artery disease behaves differently in women with later onset and symptoms that are less typical than in men. Inferior surgical results can be at least partially explained by the author's findings that women who undergo coronary bypass surgery are more likely to be older, smaller, non-white, diabetic, and in congestive heart failure than their male counterparts. What is unexplained is why we have failed to apply the same surgical strategies in women that have proven to produce better surgical results in men. These include the use of the internal mammary arteries for bypass grafts, restoring blood flow to all areas of the heart, and more extensive use of arterial instead of vein grafts for the bypass conduits. My guess is that the explanations are both technical and systemic. The surgical details of applying these techniques in women who have smaller vessels and more diffuse coronary artery disease may quite frankly take some surgeons out of their comfort zones. But with improved training, enhanced experience, and greater awareness, this can be overcome. And the authors have done a beautiful job of bringing this disparity to our attention. The greater issue, however, is our need to both learn more about and improve all aspects of the way that we approach coronary artery disease in women, from diagnosing and referring to surgery earlier to developing surgical strategies that will at the very least equal the results that we see in men. Thank you.